been quite a journey, hasn't it? Really? It's been a huge journey. I can hardly believe that this is the festival's 47th year. Now, of course, yeah. you've only been doing it a mere 37 years. I'm still the beginner, um, yeah. But it is extraordinary, and I always feel it's really marvellous to create something that didn't exist before, still exists now. But it also has changed in terms of the work we present, because if you think back, those shows back in the 70s and 80s, the work presented was technically much more simple, wasn't it? Um, you know, you think... Boleslav Polivka pretending to fly with the aid of a mirror. Yeah. Um, you know, those, you know, the canary, the, you know, for Mozart's so Chocolat was a real canary that yeah. was auditioned and was so good they took it back to France. But, they? These, but these simple so, things, they yeah. created theatrical magic, yeah, didn't they? Absolutely, yeah. In fact, I think that's the word magic, I think is quite relevant here because mm. often we've de been described as you know, the Mind Festival as a cabinet of curiosities, yeah. but I think I'd rather say that it's a box of magical tricks, not mm. magic tricks, but there's something magical about it. Mm. You know, it's very often very hard to describe the work we do, yeah. but it's always unusual, unexpected, off the wall. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult to categorize, and yet, you know, over the years, we've done so well in terms of audiences. I think that says a great deal, um, well, perhaps at least as much about the public as it does about programming, because mm -hmm. almost nothing that we've ever, well, in the world in which we inhabit, there aren't any household names. Are no. There are no very few famous artists. So the public who come usually come to something they don't know what it is or who it's by, but they come because they want to go on a exciting journey. I think that's yeah. what we've become yeah. known for. So. When the festival started, um, the theatre landscape in London was very different from uh, the way it is now. There so was, this was 1977? Yeah, 1977. Yeah. There was very little work from abroad. There had been a world theatre season curated by um, a producer called Peter Daubney um, many years before that. But that was about it. So what we were doing was really unusual um, at that time. And 47 years later, we're very happy to have carved out, a, I think, a special niche um, in, fu in the future. Maybe that will be presented in different ways. Who knows? But uh, it's, it's been a great journey, hasn't mm, it? Absolutely. And I think it's also, it's important as a platform for British work or even for international work because we get a lot of promoters who come to see the work in order to then tour it on or yeah. take it to their, their the theatres and seasons. So it's also had a very really important role there in promoting work, yeah. promoting yeah. visual theatre. The festival started in one small fringe venue. It's gone on to present shows at London's biggest theatres, most important theatres, you know, the Barbican, Sadler's Wells, the South Bank Centre, and, uh, you know, the work gets seen by very different audiences. Mm. What do you remember with greatest fondness from your 37 years of the Mime Festival? Oh my goodness. I think it would just be meeting so many artists over the years and still being you know, friends with those people, you know, that they've become more than just artists that you book to play yeah. a gig and, you know, it was, it's a relationship, isn't it? And yeah. many of those relationships are, have been very long lasting. And one of yeah. the most enjoyable yeah. features of not just our festival, I'm sure of any festival, mm. um, it's the people you meet, yeah. you know, and we have made literally friends all over the world. Well, I think the biggest risk probably that you've ever taken was to start working with me. Um, but yeah. from my point of view, it's been enormously success <laughs> successful. <laughs> However, you know, in terms of what we present, it's really quite tricky, isn't it? You've got to balance uh, the risk of putting on work which is new, unusual, which may or may not you know, shock or uh, shake people with actually having to wash your face at the box office. Mm -hmm. And I think the festival has sort of trodden a very fine line there. And most of the time, we've got it right for which we can thank you know, the, the artists that we've brought and the very adventurous public who mm -hmm. come to see our shows. Mm -hmm. We have a desire 
to bring unusual work to audiences who we hope won't have seen such things before. We don't want to be just entertainers, do we? We want to, to add something more, to take people on some kind of mm. journey that mm. they will be changed by. But one of the great pleasures of being um, the director, a programmer of a, a festival like this is bringing work um, uh, that hasn't been seen before, bringing work that wouldn't be created in this country. We also present work that is created in this country, which is wonderful. But everybody, you know, in different parts of the world, artists have different sensibilities, different mm. inspirations. And it's simply wonderful to bring different sorts of work and see the excitement that it causes and the inspiration that mm. it brings to British theatre makers mm. and just members of the public who form our audience. We brought some of uh, or the work of some of the greatest theatre makers of our time, people like Patrick Bonte and Nicole Mossou, Julian Chagrin from a long time ago, yeah. um, Carlo and Alberto Colombioni, the greatest theatre clowns that I've ever seen, Annie Fratellini, uh, yeah. whose family have been involved in circus all over Europe for, I don't know, three generations. Um, we brought uh, Jacques Lecoq. Yeah. Um, Marcel Marceau. Well, Marcel Marceau's company. We had to do that once. One of the reasons we started the festival, if you remember, uh, was to say there's more to mime than Marcel Marceau. Indeed. Um, indeed. Yeah. A great artist, yeah. let it be said. And I would always uh, say that about him. Yeah. But it's very odd, you know, if you say to somebody music, they can think of more than one uh, composer or, you know, literature, they can think of more than one author. author. Yeah, yeah. Mime, Marcel Marceau. After the performance that he and his company gave on the South Bank, uh, we had a sort of question and answer session. And Marceau, there he was, you know, a brilliant speaker, wise, yeah. uh, a, a very great man, you know, a resistance hero in the last war. It's actually his 100th birthday next year, but 2023, he's, yeah. he's not around to celebrate. Mm. Um, anyway. Yes, yeah. a very great man. We've got eight international shows this year, having only had two last year because of COVID and because of trying to manage our risk. This year we've been more risk-taking in terms of people being able to cross boundaries now, mm. which is great. We've got uh, about four or five commissions in the we festival. Have. Well, I mean, the list actually says something like there are eight UK premieres, yeah. um, two London premieres. Yeah. Um, we've got four revivals. Normally, that's more than we would normally yeah. do, i.e. shows that we've had before. But there are you know, very good reasons why we're reviving each of those shows. Um, you know, and it's always because they're well worth bringing back. And in the case of one um, a show by Told by an Idiot, it's because the company's celebrating its 30th anniversary, uh, and we wanted to celebrate that within the festival. So yeah, absolutely. That's a very and, good reason. And with David Glass Ensemble, it's their 40th anniversary, isn't it? Good heavens, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So their production of The Brides at Jackson's Lane is, is also a big, and a, a sort of double celebration, really. Yeah. yeah. But also, we hope that people, I think, you know, COVID is still with us, um, but I think there is an appetite to, for audiences to go back to the theatre. There's so much doom and gloom, or just gloom anyway, you know. So many people are unhappy, there's you know, financial problems, everything. So, you know, we would like to be seen as um, something that brings an uplift. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully. Well, I think it's that people say that it's about that post Christmas uplift when January can feel a bit gloomy. Um, that, you know, to, to come to the Mime Festival, it's something to look forward to. So the Mime Festival has always been in January. Uh, it's the beginning of the theatre year. It was, we started it at that time because there really wasn't anything else on. Um, you know, pantomimes had just about finished and nothing else had got going. So it seemed to me a very good idea to, uh, a very good time um, for a festival. Mm. And we've stuck to that time period and we've become associated with it but now there's an awful lot of competition, but nevertheless, um, it's a nice 
thing to do to start the year mm. with the sort of work we present. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 marked, isn't it? Really, yeah. you know, you know that if it's January, it must be the Mime Festival. So. Or if it's the Mime Festival, it must be January. Yeah, that's true. If there's one thing that you could bring back to the festival, what would you what would you bring? Well, first thing is a uh, show that we brought in, I think, 1980, so it's so long ago, not too many people will remember it, but it was a performance by two Italian clowns, Carlo and Alberto Colombione. Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful piece of theatre. The show was absolutely magnificent. Um, what else would I... I'd like to bring back Passa Doble, Joseph yeah. Nagy and Miguel Barcello. And pretty much anything by Teatre de Complicité, now known as Complicity, um, but in particular a production called A Minute Too Late, mm. which after the Mime Festival has been played all over the world. It's done two seasons, if not more, at the National Theatre. You know, Complicité, uh, perhaps the best known um, member of the company, was one of its founders. Simon McBurney, who I think is a theatre genius, who most people involved in theatre know, but he and uh, the original uh, members of the company, Annabel Arden, Marcello Magni, the late great Marcello Magni, and an early member, Joss Hauben, um, they presented under the umbrella of Complicité some of the finest theatre mm -hmm. I've ever seen. and very proud to have had it mm. in the festival. Oh so. yeah, absolutely. They brought in huge numbers of people, became interested in the theatre. You know, there was Complicité, Moving Picture, Mime Show. It was a really exciting time. I think I'd love to see, um, I'd love to revisit the Vinegar Works, which was our one and only ever full festival commission, 1989, um, based on Edward Gorey's short stories, Cautionary Tales, um, Julia Bardsley and Fela McDermott. Um, well, that was yes. It was it was long. It was at the Almeida Theatre. It was at the Almeida Theatre. Um, um, absolutely. And, and what's Phelim gone on to do? Well, one know. or two things. Yeah, yeah. and Julia um, in a different direction. Yes, um, but one of the most successful shows of this year at the Barbican, um, you know, running for three months, whatever it is, uh, my neighbour Totoro. Totoro is yeah. uh, directed by Phelim McDermott, who's yeah. also now um, a very well-known director of operas both in this country and in America and all over the place. So, you know, I'm very proud of yeah. him as an alumni of the Mind Festival. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah. But I think another thing to say is, sort of looking back, one does see things through rose-tinted glasses, and I think if you go back and you look at any of those things, would they be the same again? Would they be as, as hard-hitting as they were at the time? Um, some maybe would, I think. You know, A minute too late was just a... a genius piece of clowning. Well, some things are timeless, others yeah. are much more of their time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when we ask the question, what would we like to bring back? Mm, yeah. It's not really a serious question. Is I it? guess it's not. It's what did we really enjoy at the yeah. time. So what's next? Well, we've been running for 47 years. Yeah. And it really is time to write the book. Time to write the book. Time we've been to saying that we'd do that yeah. for years, but we've really got to do it. Yeah. Um, what are we going to do with 47 years' worth of archive? Indeed. These are the questions that yeah. are on our minds. So, so, so that's, you know, so next is, is write the book, um, find a home for the archive, um, and move in a new direction. Yeah. But I think that's... Nothing lasts forever. It's yeah. time to, I think evolve. Yeah. Our festival model has served us very well for a long time, but you know, we, should, uh, we should look to doing things differently, I think, in the future. Yeah. So uh, our plans are still evolving, yeah. but it will be different.